Hello everyone. I welcome you all to this uh, virtual conference on uh, pedagogical practice in physiotherapy organized by Nutan College of Physiotherapy, Visnagar, Gujarat. First and foremost, I would like to say the theme of this particular conference is unique and it is the need of the time to have such theme. The reason is very simple. We are not trained to teach whether it is offline or whether it is online. Most of the universities in physiotherapy, uh, which provides the education in physiotherapy, they don't have teaching methodology as a separate subject at the UG level. And very, very few universities have few chapters, okay, as in the teaching methodology in their post-graduation level. So what happens when anybody comes to the, uh, you know, academic field after the completion of the post-graduation, they are so much novice that even they are not aware about the different methods and uh, you know how to uh, teach to the students. So if they are not passionate, it becomes very difficult for uh, them to provide a good quality teaching and it affects the outcome also. So the best thing is, okay, let them have some idea so that they can improve their outcome. So we are not trained to teach whether it is online or offline but these skills can be easily improved by keeping some effort okay myself dr tarpan shah presently working as a principal in charge at sri swaminarayan physiotherapy college surat will be going to give you all an idea about the peer assisted learning from the physiotherapist perspective now let us see uh, this particular presentation so I'm going to give you an idea uh, about the peer assisted learning. But before that, okay, uh, I want all of you to have an idea about this particular image. Here you can see this is uh, a triangle which represents the which method you should use for the teaching and what will be the impact of it after the two weeks. Okay, uh, so anything which you read okay so almost after a two weeks you will tend to remember only 10 percentage of what you read hearing the words you will remember 20 percentage of what we hear seeing something okay visual sense 30 percentage of what we see watching a movie looking at an exhibit watching a demonstration seeing it done on location 50 percentage of what we see and hear participation in any discussion or giving a talk okay 70 percentage of what you see you will be able to remember and doing a dramatic presentation okay simul uh, sim simulating the real experience or doing the real things 90 percentage of that you will be able to remember so here you can just get an idea that passive learning this up to 50 percent is your passive learning Okay, only something you will be able to remember. But if you go with the active learning, 70 to 90 percent, you will be able to remember it. So just keep this particular, uh, you know, information in your mind. This is uh, Edgar Dell's triangle. Okay, and which is very, very applicable for us to improve our teaching and learning. Now the outline for the today's session is uh, I'm going to give you an idea about uh, how we can define PAL that means peer assisted learning. Second need for instructor. Third how does the peer assisted learning work. Then what are the benefits and very interesting part is the last that through the five different practical examples of uh, physiotherapy and how we can implement the PAL for teaching purpose okay so this is the basic outline for the today's discussion now the first we need to have an idea about the definition okay so a pal peer assisted learning is basically a collaborative approach okay in which the pairs of students are interacting with each other to enhance their learning process so three things are coming over here the first one it is a collaborative approach second uh, there are pairs of the students they are interacting with each other and the third is to enhance or to improve their learning process. So this is how you can define the peer assisted learning in a simple term. Now why PAL peer assisted learning? The reason is very simple 
because it is a very good practice for the higher education sector if you want to improve your teaching and learning second it is the trending topic okay even in the field of the research in the educational branch and it can be included as one of the feature in the strategic level plans for enhancing the teaching and learning at the institute level maybe the college maybe the university and so on and that's why the peer assisted learning is the topic of need in the present scenario now the instructors needed for the peer assisted learning why the instructors are needed so let me give you some idea before i will give you uh, you know the information about this particular uh, you know instructors why it is needed so in peer assisted learning what you are going to do is okay just suppose you have uh, second year students okay uh, say 50 to 16 in number and you want to go ahead with the peer assisted learning so now you are dividing them into the 10 groups say one group comprises of 5 to 7 people if it is less than 5 okay uh, it's not good if it is more than 7 it's not good so optimal 5 to 7 per group is well enough now you have some third year or final year students or the pg students who have been trained under you okay they are say 10 in number okay now these 10 students are going to perform the role of something called peer assisted leaders so they are not going to teach to their juniors okay juniors are going to discuss one particular topic based on the outcome which you are expecting them to learn instructors means what uh, you know a teacher or the professor they are going to plan out okay certain activities or certain topics and then they are going to teach this to the peer uh, leaders and the peer leaders are going to implement or peer leaders are going to execute this into the uh, you know the actual students okay so instructor that means the professors are basically needed why they are needed they are needed to provide the material okay uh, related to the topic a specific uh, quality material or the content they are going to provide to the supervised leaders second they are going to provide the training to the peer leaders that means what they are going to tell they are going to teach and they are going to train the peer leaders later on this peer leaders are going to execute the thinking or the material which has been provided in the way how the professors want to their juniors or uh, to the other individuals okay so and that's why you need the instructors now the second part is uh, what are the aims for the peer assisted learning so basically there are two main reasons for the peer assisted learning the first one is to work with the students to personalize their learning experience individual experience so we have seen it is an active learning method means once you will actively learn the chances that you are not going to uh, you know forget that because you have experienced it you have filled it okay and second to develop the sense of community that they belong to your community they belong to certain physiotherapy profession or certain educational group uh, so that type of feeling will come when they will work or when they will learn in any particular group so this is the basic aim uh, these are the basic aims for the peer assisted learning now how let's try to understand that how this peer assisted learning works so the students peer assisted leaders okay they are going to facilitate the small group study session by taking the responsibility for planning and running for the planning even their professors they are going to help okay the content their professors can provide so basically the pal leaders are going to execute okay the thinking and planning of the professor now what the staff can offer the professors they can offer they can offer the ideas they can offer different activities and they can offer the course related resources so these are the things that will be provided to the pal leaders by the staff now pal leaders are not expected to teach but they are expected to support the students to find out their solution because you are aware that okay asking the question is the way to improve the intelligence asking the question is the way to improve the intelligence so in a similar way 
when the students are going to discuss in a group okay the pal leaders are more like a catalyst okay they are going to enhance the process of the discussion which is going on and they will see that this particular discussion will come to certain conclusions at the end of the session okay now uh, uh, let's have a look at the process for this peer assisted learning so first you need to identify what are the learning outcomes you are expecting from any particular pal session which you are uh, you know going to implement in your students okay so learning outcomes so at the end of this session the student should be able to do this or should be able to understand this okay so that is your basic learning outcomes that has to be defined first now based on the objectives or the outcomes you need to define or create the different activities so the activities here means what the active learning so you create such an activity where the students involvement is more they are using more than one sense and they are actively involved for this particular activities which you are going to design so it will be a lifelong experience for them and they are not going to forget this activities throughout their life okay promote the group work okay so in the present era or the time you have seen that it's a an era of working in a group if you want to expand if you want to learn quick okay if you want to teach quick and so on okay the third one integrate that means combining the application and study skills some students are good with the reading they able to recall remember recall and reproduce the information with the reading some students are good with the hearing they make good use of the hearing sense so now you are what you are doing is you are integrating or combining the skills okay when students are performing this it is going to automatically happen okay so one students is reading others are listening then others are listen, uh, reading uh, okay remaining are going to listen then they are going to discuss and so on dynamism dynamism means r r r so here i am not talking about s rajamouli junior ntr and ram charan's movie r r r i am talking about uh, refer redirect and reword okay these are the three r's that you have to see if some students are not performing properly while uh, this particular pal session is going on so you can refer okay you can ask them to uh, approach some xyz students within the same group so they will give them idea how to perform you can redirect them that you can perform as how they are performing the other students if they are performing good and the third one is reward okay if you want you can give some reward also to them okay as a gift or as a motivational word that you are doing good and so on and the last part in this process is evaluation so evaluation for the teaching can be done in the multiple ways and there is a golden rule that the things which we don't measure cannot be improved the things which we don't measure cannot be improved so what we need to do is we need to evaluate about our teaching effectiveness so personally i also take the teaching evaluation form for my teaching before and after uh, you know the uh, few weeks of teaching similarly here after performing the activities means before and after activities you can evaluate that whether the level of knowledge has improved or not whether it is same or so on okay now comes the last part which we are going to discuss in detail that is about the examples of session so five different activities i have taken and that we are going to discuss in detail that is breathing exercises pathological gaits musculoskeletal pt in that i have taken an example of adhesive capsulitis practicing presentations and placement opportunities so these are the uh, five main uh, points with an examples that i am going to explain to you all so let's see this one by one the first one is breathing exercises so just suppose you want to teach the breathing exercise to your students by the pal session so what you can do is just suppose you want to teach the pal session to the second year students so now here okay you have say 60 students in the second year so now you are dividing this 60 students into the 10 different groups so 10 groups so there will be 6 students per group now do in the 6 students now among this 6 uh, 6 students per group 
okay you need to have at least uh, 10 third or final year students okay so who are trained with this breathing exercise under you and you can execute the exact information or exact uh, you know idea which you want uh, second year students to learn through the peer assisted leaders like your third year students so uh, it should be a pile leader should be one per peer teaching group okay peer assisted learning group so 10 PAL leaders you are in need randomly you can divide to any of the group to the 10 PAL leaders now after dividing this PAL leaders what you can do is now the groups are ready the PAL leaders are also ready so you can take an evaluation of the present level of knowledge of second year students about the breathing exercises so it can be through the questionnaire it can be through the multiple ways so here what you can do is you can uh, ask them to fill up one questionnaire where you will be asking the questions like uh, name the inspiratory and expiratory breathing exercises second indications of diaphragmatic breathing the third one is indications for parsley breathing exercises or like that few questions related to the breathing exercise you can form and you can ask them to write it down now collect these papers okay what they have written individually that reflects the present level of them about the breathing exercises now you give them the uh, books standard books it can be cash it can be kisner or it can be tidies or any other book now in a group let them read about the breathing exercises it can be diaphragmatic breathing, pursed lip breathing, glossopharyngeal breathing, butuco breathing, lamez breathing, all, all the breathing exercises. Now, at the end, once they are reading it, okay, one person is reading, others are listening, then other is reading, these individuals are uh, listening. So, like that, once they are completing with the topic, uh, you ask them to discuss among themselves about this particular topic. Once the discussion is over, again, you ask them to write it down the same question which they have written before the PAL session. Okay, now the same question. Name the inspiratory and expiratory breathing exercise, indications for diaphragmatic breathing, indications for pursed lip breathing and so on. And now you can compare because they have written the same questions answer, one before the session and one after the session. You can get an idea that whether their present level of knowledge about this particular condition has improved or not okay so this is how you can evaluate now here before and after and through just a discussion method or the discussion as an activity you have evaluated their level of knowledge about the breathing exercises now based on the outcome you can dis uh, describe or you can change the different activities now let us understand the second activity that is pathological gait. So there are so many pathological gait you are aware about it hand to knee gait, scissoring gait, circumductory gait okay and many pathological gait uh, you are aware about it. Now you want uh, you know the students to have an idea about the pathological gait. So here the outcome the learning outcome is learning through the activities. Previously, it was learning through the discussion. Now, here the learning through the activities. So, what you are going to do is, okay, again, 10 pile leaders and say you have uh, 10 different groups and 5 to 6 students per group. Now, new Nestle Maggie, okay, just suppose Maggie or any other neurological book where the pathological gate is given and you want that material to be referred by your students. So, you have to provide that material to the students for the PAL session. Now, let the students to read this, let the students to discuss it, but then the outcome will be described by how they perform the pathological gait initially, once they have completed the first reading and discussion, how they are performing. And once all are performing, okay, the other individuals are observing, then they are correcting each other and at the end, okay, once they feel that they have learned, now how they are performing it. So based on that, once they have performed for the first time and last they have performed that they are aware about it, what is the difference that is the their learning okay, after doing this particular session on the 
pathological gait so here the outcome is uh, you know uh, graded or it is evaluated through the activities where they are actively involved in performing certain activities okay pathological gait so that is through the outcome now let us see the third example that is musculoskeletal physiotherapy in that i have taken an example of adhesive capsulitis uh, most commonly it, it's also been called as the frozen shoulder in so why i have taken this because it is very common and most of the physiotherapist are aware about it so now just suppose you are interested to know the present level of knowledge of the students about the adhesive capsulitis so how you can evaluate that how much they know about the adhesive capsulitis so you want to know uh, entire detail information that how much they know about this particular topic so when you want to uh, your outcome is to uh, evaluate through certain activities so here you can go with the formulation of quiz competition or quizzes and say round 1 where you will be asking the questions related to the adhesive capsulitis clinical orthopedics round 2 where you will be asking the questions related to the medical and surgical management for the uh, adhesive capsulitis and round 3 you will be asking the questions related to the pt management for the adhesive capsulitis so what you can do is now the number of students which you have you divide them into the different team the pal leaders can ask the questions and they can do the marking or the evaluation and you can play a quiz for the three rounds and in the end of the three rounds you can give the final markings uh, that how much uh, correct answer they have given and how much mark they have got at the end of the quiz competition now you give the books or the material to the students it can be your J. Maheshwari, Ebenezer, Jain Joshi, Turek, Campbell, or whatever the book you feel that you want your students to refer. So give these books to the students, and now ask them to read about the adhesive capsulitis. Then again, you conduct the quiz with the same question and see that uh, whether they are able to answer all the questions or not, or how many questions they are able to answer. Okay. so now what will happen you can evaluate that after reading whether their uh, knowledge has improved or not okay so just suppose they have given some wrong answered or unanswered some questions were there so they can refer that uh, you know they can search and refer the book okay for getting the answer for those questions and when you are conducting the quiz for the second time they can give the answers so i'm sure that you have uh, learned something so far and uh, you are getting what i am telling you okay believe me it works very good when you are implement this to the students and moreover another benefit is you no need to keep on speaking for the entire one hour when you implement the pal sessions to the students the reason is i have told you it becomes more of the passive learning when you will keep on talking so once you involve the students and once you go with the active learning it improves the outcome of your teaching lifelong experience they are never going to forget this lifelong experience they are never going to forget it now let us see the two more example that is practicing presentations so whether you are a students whether you are academicians whether you are clinician whether you are a researcher or whatever you are doing it in the branch of physiotherapy okay some or the other time you have to do the presentations it may be seminar it may be conference it may be uh, you know workshop it may be panel discussion okay it can be uh, you are invited as a guest and you have to give some presentation along with the speech and so on so uh, giving the presentation is unavoidable if you are in the uh, you know uh, academic field especially you know if you are working in any college even in the clinic or even in the field of research you need to do some or the other presentation and in the 21st century okay one of the skill which everybody needs to you know uh, learn that is how to give the proper presentation how to represent yourself properly or how to you know convey the message okay to the other individuals in a proper channelized way so now again you are having the few pal leaders and how many pal leaders you have similar groups you are forming and now you are giving them 
you know certain topics okay for the presentation say group 1 you are giving one topic and now the pal leaders okay are guiding them that which material they can refer from where they can get the material and so on it can be from newspaper from the books from the internet from any journal any magazine okay from xyz resource so now they have to prepare the presentation on the topic which they which has been given to them now once they have received the topic they have to discuss among the group okay that uh, how to write the content which content they have to present in how many minutes they have to present what is their audience size okay what is the venue where they have to present and so on so this they have to assume and of course the pal leaders will guide them so now they will start preparing the material then they will start preparing the uh, they will start doing the practice and they will start presenting it now what will happen the pal leaders as i said they are more like a catalyst they will give them the guidance they will not going to teach but they will give the guidance that you speak slowly they will give the guidance that improve the melody or the tone of your voice they are going to guide that you could improve to your dressing they will guide them that you should practice more they will guide them that time management is important and so on so once the students are practicing like this in a group okay so what will happen they'll be able to correct themselves very easily compared to the correction by their professors or by the other individual because uh you know the presentation on the stage is one of the biggest fear for most of the people and uh, this art can easily be learned so what will happen once they will do uh, this type of discussion how to do the presentation and then they do the self correction so two way you can evaluate this particular activities okay the outcome will be self evaluation they themselves will evaluate themselves okay they will take the video that how they are delivering the speech or how they are giving the presentation and then they are uh, seeing and listening to this and then they themselves will find out that what are the loopholes what are the mistakes and then they try to correct it second peer evaluation their friends will tell okay now youngsters means friends huh? friends will go to this branch so i will go to this branch for the higher study in a similar way when the friend says that you have to speak slowly so it will go not only in brain it will go in the heart also huh? youngsters very much connected with each other okay so what will happen peer evaluation and self evaluation and the another one is taking the video before and after the presentation and correction for the same so this is how uh, you know they can improve themselves through the pal session say for the pal session you can take the topic like uh, placement opportunities okay so placement opportunities the concept is coming up slowly in the field of the physiotherapy where most of the colleges are working to working or trying to provide some shots of campus interview or the placement to the students so now you also wants to prepare your students or you also wants to uh, you know get the good placement so pal session can be arranged for the same where your interns or pgs they have the idea about uh, what are the things needed for the placement and then you are initiating this particular session among the group okay maybe for uh, with the discussion method or sharing the ideas say 10 uh, 10 groups you are dividing the students and in each group you have six members so all six members will have a different concept or idea about the placement so once you uh, create a discussion related to this particular topic with the objective or outcome is to uh, you know uh, getting the new idea and to implement it or to execute this particular pro, uh, you know problem solution so say a six students will have a different idea one will say we need to have a placement cell in our college another uh, students have an idea that we need to work more on our knowledge in the branch of physiotherapy another individual say along with the knowledge we have to work more on our skill as well so working on knowledge working on skill working on placement cell then making a proper cv or assume bio data whatever you say then Uh, uh you know uh 
what are the other alternatives okay keep on seeing for the ads in the different newspaper social media and so on contacting their seniors okay or contacting the uh, staff professors who is uh, the in charge for the placement cell and so on and implementing their advice okay their uh, guidance if you are uh, implementing or executing it it will help you for the placement related uh, you know work so like this also creating the new ideas can also be done through the path sessions so i am sure this five examples will give you some uh, insights about the how to arrange for the path sessions active learning 90 to 100% of the retention of the information throughout their life so best for you best for the students as well best for you also because continuously one hour you should not speak okay and that is passive learning or passive teaching and here they will become active learners okay let's have a look at this you can see the image of 2011 when the india win the world cup okay after more than two decades under the leadership of ms dhoni okay you know why it is possible under his leadership because of the main reason which i think that is the teamwork so teamwork always win and we need to have a good teamwork so implementing this pal session to your students okay it will be more like working in a team this is the skill required for all the students and professionals in the 21st century so they will develop a quality of being a good team member or maybe a good team leader that quality will develop with the pal session leadership leadership is the quality which is the need of the time in all branches of knowledge even in day to day life that we need to develop this particular skill called leadership so when in a group students are doing the discussion students are doing the presentation students are doing some activities and so on so on alternate basis they will also become the leader and they will direct they will refer they will redirect the other individual so indirectly without you teaching them they will develop the teamwork quality they will develop the leadership quality that is definitely going to be helpful to your students okay uh, for their further professional you know uh, professional uh, development the third quality that students will develop okay that is because of the path session is the problem solving uh, quality or the skill Okay, what will happen they will all the informations are available with the students we have seen that uh, placement opportunities so already they have idea all six individual is having an idea but now they got the problem they got the problem that how to get the job after passing this particular course that problem has initiated a discussion or the ideas that what are the possibilities what we can do and then they got an idea that there should be a placement cell we should work on the skill we should work on the knowledge we should work on the soft skills like communication skills okay then uh, professional etiquette or the manners we have to learn okay like this all the information they have but now you have collected and integrated information why it is possible because why now you have the problem so while solving this particular problem all the answers which were available it came to one place in a channelized form where the peer uh, peer assisted leaders have helped them so problem solving capacity has to be uh, you know learned when uh, you are developing this particular session and implementing it so it's going to happen teamwork they are going to develop leadership qualities they are going to develop and problem solving skills students are going to develop after the pal session communication skills okay so when they will interact with their colleagues when they will interact with the pal leaders okay and when they interact repeatedly and when they interact for you know very frequently okay what will happen indirectly without teaching them their communication skill will develop their confidence about uh, speaking in a group okay that will develop okay so communication skills will develop after the pal session now uh, let us see this uh, in detail what are the benefits of pals to the students 
so the first one is it will promote the collaborative and active learning so active learning means 90 to 100% of retention they will be able to remember it for a long long period of time because they have experienced it they have feel it okay collaborative means what combining teamwork okay they will learn that how to work in a team next they, it will deepen the students understanding of the subject or the discipline okay it will create more interest towards the physiotherapy more interest towards the chest physiotherapy and towards our entire profession the uh, interest will develop okay because of this type of pals sessions okay the third one is they develop the key study skills and promotes the independent learning okay key study skills means what the skills which is required okay for the study okay so if you have uh, skills called say independent learning once you are learning in group now you have an idea that how i should uh, improve my own uh, you know learning so that uh, you know i can learn easily i can recall reproduce recall remember and reproduce very quickly so that will develop the fourth benefit is helps the students to make a successful uh, transition to the tertiary studies so once this uh, pal uh, st uh, topic study has been done by the students and later on now the same topic will be taught by the professor so what happens it will become very easy for the professor to teach and very easy for the students to learn at the same time now the professors can go in more detail on that particular topic that means known to unknown they have some known information so now they can take it to the unknown area improves the retention and progression rate among the students and it improves the academic performance of the attendants our ultimate goal is to provide the good teaching to the students because we are passionate and second we paid also for the same so it will improve the academic performance of the attendees and that is what we want for students it will improve their confidence second their interpersonal skills we have discussed communication leadership and so on developing effective learning techniques so they will get an idea that if i will have this type of problem how i should go with the learning which method i should use so that i'll be able to remember recall and reproduce for a longer period of time and next they will develop a quality called better understanding of the course material so if they receive any material now they will have an idea that how this particular material has to be channelized in a such a way that we will be able to remember it for a long time it is very good even for the pal leaders this sessions are going to be very helpful for them because uh, they may get some extra marks because they have conducted some assignments or the activities second it will improve their confidence they will also develop the leadership quality because they are handling managing controlling guiding or working as a catalyst for the 6 to 7 students it will improve their interpersonal skills also okay like communication skill leadership skill etc developing an employment experience they will feel that okay i am now employed i can work in some college i can work in some clinic they will get a feel that i can work okay independently as well okay and the next quality that is consolidation of course material they will get an idea that if i will have this type of topic this type of material how i can execute among my juniors or the other students it is good for the professors as well because it improved the students outcome that means students will be able to grasp the information properly increase the students engagement that means active learning so recall on uh, recall rate will be good okay then quicker course feedback so what will happen quickly they'll be able to perceive all the information okay they'll be able to improve their knowledge and the understanding about that particular topic and it will save the time in a long term so they will get an idea how to study in a group okay they'll get an idea that how we can you know uh, study any particular topic so this all will improve with the professor okay now once they implement it in the students it will improve that reduces the work of the professor it is very good for the department as well as university also because greater student retention students will now don't feel any boredom in coming to the college okay they will be interested to come they will be interested to stay because it's now active learning 
better student results because understanding is good so remember recall and reproduction of that particular information or knowledge will also be good and improve students experience because once they experience it they will never going to forget it so that will also improve so uh, you can implement this uh, pal sessions and it can be designed as per the particular topic or the subject which you teach in the college and then uh, you can plan it out as per the different objectives like uh, you know you are interested to have some new ideas you are interested to have a discussion you are interested to have the activities and then you can plan it out you can customize as per the need of your students and then you can implement it okay and you can check before and after and you can see whether it has uh, given some improvement in the your students group or not okay believe me active learning and students are going to remember it for a very very long period of time and it is going to be very very helpful to the students to the pal leaders to you as a professor and even to the institute where you are going to work okay so thank you very much for the patience listening i would like to extend my thanks to dr subhas khatri sir and the team of the luton college of physiotherapy for their kind invitation thank you thank you one and all thank you